Councilman Here. Paul Riddick, and then please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. Heavenly Father, we come to you this evening as humbly as we know how, thanking you for all the blessings you bestow upon us as a city. We ask you to give relief to those families who've been affected by natural catastrophes, wildfires, house fires, and other things. We ask you to give us the ability to do this job in a fair and just manner. These and all the blessings we ask in thy name. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. The clerk will call the roll. What do you expect? We only do it once. Ms. Graves? Here. Ms. Johnson? I mean, I. Mr. Protegiro? Here. Here. Roll. Yes. Here. Mr. Riddick? Here. Mr. Smeagol? Here. Dr. Wibley? Mr. Wynn? Here. Mr. Frame? Here. The motion is to dispense with the reading of the minutes of the previous meeting, please. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Mr. Frame? Aye. The clerk will please read the resolution for the closed meeting. A resolution certifying a closed meeting of the Council of the City of Norfolk held in accordance with the provisions of the Virginia Freedom of Information Act. Adopt the resolution. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Norfolk City Council Chambers. We're glad to have all of you here. For those of you who do not regularly attend our council sessions, the process which we will follow tonight is we have one quick a consent agenda item involving some purchase of sand for an emergency in Ocean, in, uh, in ocean View. And then we have uh, a number of public hearings. Um, then after the public hearings, we'll move to the regular agenda. And we'll vote on all these matters just the way they are, are numbered on our printed docket. And then at the conclusion of the formal agenda, if any member of the public would like to address the City Council on a on new business, that's something that's not on our agenda, you'll be given that opportunity. But in order to have your name called, you must have first signed a slip of paper, uh, which was made available to you in the lobby behind the council chambers before the meeting began. It looks like a number of you have uh, elected to do that. Because Sheila is just bringing me the, the, the messages right now. Okay. What else? It was just me. They want some more than the speaker. Okay. I got my instructions. All right, so um, there are no uh, ceremonial matters, so we'll move directly to the consent agenda. Um, motion is to approve the consent agenda. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Um, IB1, please. IB1 is an invitation to bid scheduled for this day. Uh, pursuant to state law to accept bids for a long-term garage parking agreement with a term of approximately 11 years and six months for 1,600 to 2,000 parking spaces in the city of Norfolk and Fountain Park Garage located at 130 Bank Street, MacArthur Center North and MacArthur Center South Garages located at 500 East City Hall Avenue, Bank Street Garage located at 441 Bank Street and Freemason Street Garage located at 161 Freemason Street. All right, how many bids have been received, please? One, Mr. President. Please uh, read the bid and mark it for identification. Um, this bid is to enter into a garage parking agreement with the city uh, by CityWalk 2 LLC, who will lease up to a total of 1,607 parking spaces um, in the MacArthur Center North and South garages, 500 parking spaces in the Fountain Park garage for an initial term of 10 years with two successive renewal options of five years, each at the rate of 25 uh, dollars per month with annual increases of 2% annually for each year during the renewal options. Okay. And you have marked it for identification? I've marked it CityWalk 2 LLC bid February 23, 2016, Mr. Thank President. You. Are there any additional bids offered? There are no additional bids. I hear I declare the bidding closed. There, is there any member of the public who wishes to be heard on this matter? If there, are no, if there is no member of the public who wishes to be heard, I declare the public hearing closed now. Is there a recommendation from city staff regarding the bid received? 
City staff recommends that the bid <coughs> by City Walk 2 LLC be accepted in the garage parking agreement awarded to City Walk 2 LLC. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Okay, if there's no discussion, I will ask the city clerk to read the proposed ordinance. An ordinance accepting the bid submitted by City Walk 2 LLC for a long term garage parking agreement with a term of approximately 11 years and six months for the lease of 1,600 to 2,000 parking spaces in the city of Norfolk and Fountain Park Garage located at 130 Bank Street. MacArthur Center North and MacArthur Center South garages located at 500 East City Hall Avenue, Bank Street Garage located at 441 Bank Street, and Freemason Street Garage located at 161 Freemason Street. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Thank you all very much. Um, public hearing one, please. Public hearing one, scheduled for this day on the application of Brock Ventures, Inc. for an amendment to the future land use designation in the general plan from an institutional to multifamily and for a change of zoning from IN1 to R13 on property located at 435 Virginia Avenue. And Mr. President, request has been made to continue this item to April 26. All right, then the motion is to continue. Then call the roll, please. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Public hearing two. Public hearing two scheduled for this day on the application of the auto connection for a change of zoning from R8 single family to conditional C2 quarter commercial district on property on approximately uh, of 80 foot by 125 foot portion of the property located to the northwest of the site on property located at 6336 through 6352 East Virginia Beach Boulevard and by a 7-0 vote planning commission recommends approval. We're ready to vote. I know we continued this last time. Okay, call the roll. I have two ordinances for this, Mr. President. The first is an ordinance to rezone a portion of the property located at 6336 to 6352 East Virginia Beach Boulevard from R8 to conditional C2. Mr. Baraki, are you here? Just Sam, in case you have any questions. All right, thank you. Okay. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. And the second is an ordinance granting a special exception to operate an automobile sales and service establishment named Auto Connection on property located at 6336 to 6352 East Virginia Beach Boulevard. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. <coughs> Public hearing three? Public hearing three scheduled for this day on the application of the City Planning Commission for a zoning text amendment to permit by special exception any one use listed in Table 4-A or 6-A of the zoning ordinance of the City of Norfolk 1992 as amended in a building which has been designated as a Norfolk Historic Landmark under Chapter 9 of the zoning ordinance, even when the use does not appear on the use table for the zoning district in which the building is located by 7-0 vote planning commission recommends approval and i have an ordinance for that uh, to amend section 9-2.3 of the zoning ordinance of the city of norfolk 1992 so as to permit by special exception any one use listed in table 4-a or 6-a of the zoning ordinance in a building which has been designated as a norfolk historic landmark dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt ms graves aye ms johnson aye Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Uh, this came out of HAPSI, I think, uh, that they had recommended this, and I'm glad to see we've finally gotten to this. It's very important for our historic structures. Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Public hearing four? Public hearing four scheduled for this day on the application of the City Planning Commission to amend Plan Norfolk 2030 so as to adopt the Coastal Character District with associated actions and for a zoning text amendment to Section 2-3 definitions Table 4-B, yard requirements in residential districts. Section 15-4, motor vehicle parking design standards. Table 15-A, table of minimum parking requirements. And Table 15-B, table of bicycle parking requirements of the zoning ordinance of the City of Norfolk 1992 as amended to define character district coastal, to amend the zoning map, to adopt the coastal character district boundaries, and to amend various development and design standards within the district. And uh, by a 7 0 vote, Planning Commission recommends approval. Ellis James? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Mrs. Graves, Vice Mayor, 
members of the council, Mr. Jones. My name is Ellis W. James. I reside at 2021 Ken Lake Place in the city of Norfolk. Because you have a long, long docket tonight, I will make it uh, short and sweet. I want to, for the record, indicate my support of the City Planning Commission's request for the amendments to Plan 2030 Norfolk. Uh, it contains a number of things that very helpfully describe the coastal district. And I was delighted to see that uh, bicycles were also included in that. That was very helpful. Uh, I would urge each of you, I'm sure you've had an opportunity to read about this and understand what, how important it is. I hope that each of you will vote in support of this change. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Ellen. Call the roll, please. I have three ordinances for this. Uh, first is an ordinance to establish the boundaries of the Coastal Character District for purposes of applying provisions of the zoning ordinance of the City of Norfolk 1992, dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt Ms. Graves. Aye. Ms. Johnson. Aye. Mr. Protegiru. Aye. Mr. Riddick. Aye. Mr. Smeagle. Aye. Dr. Wibley. Aye. Mr. Wynn. Aye. Mr. Frame. Aye. The second is an ordinance to amend the zoning ordinance of the City of Norfolk 1992 in order to add a definition for coastal character district and to indicate which provisions relating to parking requirements and minimum required yards will apply in that character district. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt Ms. Graves. Aye. Ms. Johnson. Aye. Mr. Protegiro. Aye. Mr. Riddick. Aye. Mr. Smeagle. Aye. Dr. Wibley. Aye. Mr. Wynn. Aye. Mr. Frame. Aye. And the third is an ordinance to amend the city's general plan, Plan Norfolk 2030, so as to establish a new character district known as the Coastal Character District in the Ocean View area of the city. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Graves. Aye. Ms. Johnson. Aye. Mr. Protegiro. Aye. Mr. Riddick. Aye. <coughs> Mr. Smeagle. Aye. Dr. Wibley. Aye. Mr. Wynn. Aye. Mr. Frame. Aye. Public hearing five, please. Public hearing five scheduled for this day to hear comments on an ordinance to amend and reordain sections one and two of the capital improvement program budget and to add a new section three to the capital improvement program budget for the fiscal year 2016 to finance economic development authority costs, <coughs> pardon me, in the amount of $14,500,000 related to the conversion of the former J.C. Penney store at Military Circle to an office building. Okay, there's no members of the public, no members of the public signed up to address us on this matter. So you call the roll. An ordinance to amend and reordain sections one and two of the capital improvement program budget and to add a new section three to the capital improvement program budget for the fiscal year 2016 to finance economic development authority costs in the amount of $14,500,000 related to the conversion of the former J.C. Penney store at Military Circle to an office building. Right. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt Ms. Graves. Um, first of all, I just want to say um, that I am very, um, I'm happy to see that we are moving forward with this transaction and that um, this is the beginning to start in a re revitalization of the military, pro military circle corridor area. Um, I wasn't really enthused about the story that the paper wrote, but um, the overall nuts and bolts of the project, um, it's not just a handout to the corporation. Um, it's very similar to some of the other transactions that have been done in the downtown corridor of the city um, on Granby Street with the mall um, and things of that nature. And so to see some city money being spent over on um, the east side of the city to help um, breathe life into uh, the military circle, military highway corridor um, is something that I have worked really hard for. And I'm glad to see that this particular um, uh, transaction is coming to fruition. Um, once it's finalized, uh, there are going to be about eight or 900 new jobs, but the new jobs to residents that will be able to apply for them will be about 200, and the average salaries of those jobs will be about $50,000. And so um, this breathes some, in my own words, it takes, it starts to take the mall off life support just a little bit and allows for it to breathe on its own, but it will give us a really good return on our investment. So thank you to um, the manager 
and his staff for working with the Economic Development Authority to make this happen. This doesn't put any debt on the city. Uh, well, it puts debt on the city, but it's a short-term debt on the city to help the Economic Development Authority accomplish the goal of getting this space uh, rented out and getting um, and bringing new life to the Military Circle Corridor area, which desperately needs it. I vote aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. <clears throat> Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Public hearing six. Public hearing six, scheduled for this day to hear comments on the Economic Development Authority of the City of Norfolk's issuance of up to $14,500,000 in notes to finance in whole or in part certain costs of the EDA related to the acquiring, constructing, and equipping of the former J.C. Penney store at the gallery at Military Circle and the property related thereto and the cost of issuing the EDA notes. Okay. Ready to vote? No, I have a roll. Ordinance authorizing the City of Norfolk to enter into a cooperation agreement to provide for the payment of notes issued by the Economic Development Authority and to pledge the City's full faith and credit in connection therewith. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Thank you. Um, where are we? Public hearing seven, please. Public hearing seven scheduled for this day to hear comments on the city's issuance of up to $8 million in wastewater system revenue bonds to finance with respect to the city's wastewater system, certain costs of acquiring, constructing, and equipping capital improvements for which bond proceeds have been appropriated pursuant to the city's capital improvement plan. And I have an ordinance authorizing the issuance and sale Just by the city of... And Ellis, did you want to speak on this wastewater plan? On the seven. Yes. Please. Ellis James. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mrs. Graves, Vice Mayor. Members of the Council, my name is Ellis W. James. <coughs> I reside at 2021 Kenlake Place here in the city of Norfolk. Um, I hope that you will, Mr. Mayor, allow me to let my remarks apply um, to both seven and eight. Sure. My support for both of these <coughs> uh, general obligation stormwater bond system and wastewater system revenue bonds are extremely important. I know that you're very familiar with them, and I would urge each of you to vote yet I in support of this. Thank you. Thank you. That was call the roll. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Public hearing eight? Public hearing eight scheduled for this day to hear comments on the city's issuance of up to $3 million in general obligation stormwater system bonds to finance certain costs of acquiring, constructing, and equipping capital improvements for which bond proceeds have been appropriated pursuant to the city's capital improvement plan. And I have an ordinance authorizing the issuance and sale by the city of general obligation bonds for stormwater improvements. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt Ms. Graves. Aye. Ms. Johnson. Aye. Mr. Protegiro. Aye. Mr. Riddick. Aye. Mr. Smeagol. Aye. Dr. Webley. Aye. Mr. Wynn. Aye. Mr. Frame. Aye. Public hearing nine. Public hearing nine scheduled for this day to hear comments on an ordinance authorizing the vacation and release by the City of Norfolk to CityWalk 2 LLC, those certain two pedestrian access easements located on and running through the two commercial place building. And I have an ordinance authorizing the vacation and release by the City of Norfolk to City Walk 2 LLC, those certain two pedestrian access easements located on and running through the two commercial place building, and authorizing the city manager to execute and deliver deeds of release on behalf of the city and to do all things necessary and proper to affect the vacation and release of said pedestrian access easements. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Thank you. Public hearing 10. Public hearing 10 scheduled for this day to hear comments on an ordinance authorizing an amendment to the lease between the City of Norfolk and <coughs> Muddy Paws Grooming and Retail Store LLC for that certain property located at 400 Granby Street, Suite North B. And I have an ordinance authorizing the amendment to the lease between the City and Muddy Paws Grooming and Retail Store LLC for that certain property located at 400 Grammy Street, Suite North B, and authorizing the city manager to execute the agreement on behalf of the city. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? 
Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. All right, uh, R1, please. R1 is an ordinance granting a special exception authorizing the operation of an entertainment establishment with alcoholic beverages known as Elegant Occasions by Krista on property located at 9605 Granby Street by a 7-0 vote planning commission recommends denial. Okay, <coughs> a number of folks who have signed up to address the council on this matter tonight um, and a number of folks who have signed up uh, in as proponents but who do not wish to speak and so what I'm going to do is call the names of the folks who have signed up to speak and then I'll call out the names of the folks um, who have uh, here to show their support. If you do want to speak, though, you can come to the podium when I call your name. When I do call your name, if you'll come to the podium, if you want to speak, and identify your, yourself for the record by giving us your full name and your present home address, and then we have a lot of you here tonight. We would like you to you know, limit your remarks to three minutes. Okay. Krista Hines. Good evening. Good evening. Hi, my name is Krista Hines. Um, I reside at 40008 River Breeze Circle, Chesapeake, Virginia, 23321. Um, I'm actually um, one of the owners of Elegant Occasions by Krista, and um, I just want to come before you guys and speak to you about the process that it has taken us to get where we were, we are at now. Um, we started with the planning department, went into the planning department back in September, maybe October, beginning of October, working with them, getting everything in place. Everything was going well. Um, we met with the planning department three times, three times. Um, one, even one time, Rick Hen went in with us. But we met with the planning department three times. And within going through everything in the planning department, no one ever, never said anything about the APZ zone. Nobody ever said one thing. And it wasn't until the end of December that we get a email saying that, hey, you need to, you asking us to withdraw our application and then um, they would refund us our funds back and saying it was in an APZ zone. And I'm like, wow. You know, and I'm like, where did this come from? Finally, a um, few other people of our came together and had a meeting with planning department and the Navy. In the meeting with the planning department and the Navy, both, both of them said they dropped the ball on this. Navy said he only been in here a year and a half in that position and he lacked the, the, the time to actually educate everybody on this particular issue. Not only that, then the people in the planning department said they did not know about this issue. And they said that they didn't know about it. They said they had to pull it up on a map and use a magnifying glass. Now, I don't understand. And then, you know, and they're, and they're telling us this, and I'm like, wow, you know, and you asking me to take, you know, take my application back and, you know, everything was going fine. Where did it come from? And I know with all the emails flying, and I realized somebody from the planning committee put a bug in that ear because he's associated with the Democratic Social Club that did not want us there. He put the bug in their ear, and he knew what to get this project knocked down. And I don't think that's fair. You can't just because you don't like something, that's not how the process works, and I really hope you guys really, really understand. And to, and I, what I don't understand is, you know, and I listened to the planning committee when we had, when we met, and it was like they have to set the precedents. Why have to be set, why the precedents have to be set here on this business when it's such a small space? When we were in the meeting with the, with the Navy, he said over and over, you know, he said, he said it's not up to, he says not up to me, it's up to the city is really up to the city. He kept saying that over and over. But then when we went to the planning department committee, he kind of threatened. And I just don't understand for a small space. And 
I'm really trying to understand how they're going to move, how you guys are going to move forward with the development of the businesses in Ocean View. Because if you knock this project down, then what about the other projects? Because I'm going to be looking. All right, thank you. Appreciate it. Captain Douglas Beaver. Good evening. Good evening. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, good evening. For the record, my name is Captain Douglas Beaver. I am the commanding officer of Naval Station Norfolk, and my address is 1530 Gilbert Street, Suite 2000, Norfolk, Virginia 23511. I'm here to provide comment with regard to the special exception application for a banquet hall at 9605 Granby Street, agenda item R1. The proposed site is located approximately 1.5 miles northeast of Naval Station Norfolk Chambers Field. It is in the 65 to 70 decibel day-night average noise zone and an accident potential zone two. It is also located underneath the major departure corridor. On, over the years, the Navy has developed an air installation compatibility use zones or ACUS studies associated with Chambers Field. In addition, in 2005, the cities of Norfolk, Chesapeake, and Virginia Beach undertook a joint land use study to study compatible land use in the vicinity of the area's military installations. Recently, in 2013, Norfolk City Council adopted the City of Norfolk's Comprehensive Plan, Plan Norfolk 2030, which contains action statements within the Identifying Land Use Strategies chapter, which states, do not support any increase in intensity of uses located in incompatible noise and accident potential zones, and seek opportunities to reduce the intensity of those incompatible uses. The updated 2009 ACUS was utilized by the, city of, by the city in Plan Norfolk 2030, incorporating the ACUS into the city's zoning ordinance and also not supporting increased densities in these areas. The City of Norfolk Planning Commission reviewed the facts associated with the proposed development and determined that it is an incompatible use under the JLUS and recommended disapproval of the project. We support the City of Norfolk's Plan Norfolk 2030 which opposes any increase in intensity of incompatible uses in an accident potential zone. The Navy and the City of Norfolk have a fantastic relationship built on respect and trust. We look forward to continuing that relationship as we work through this issue and any others that arise. Thank you. Thank you, Captain. Alfonso Albert. Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor Graves. Uh, Honorable Counsel, Mr. Manager, Mr. Pishko, Mr. Daughtry, good evening. My name is Alfonso Albert, and I reside at 1017 Godfrey Avenue. And uh, I am here to speak on behalf of uh, Elegant Occasions by Krista. Uh, Krista Hines and uh, her husband, uh, I think, embodies the American spirit. They believe in uh, self-reliance. They believe in entrepreneurship. I think what you heard from Krista and her passion is her life dream uh, tied up in this project. Uh, they are strong members of our faith community and our church, uh, where Dr. Houston, I know you all are familiar with, Gethsemane Community Fellowship Church, Dr. Houston pastors, and that entire family is a uh, mainstay uh, at that church. And we really, really wanted to uh, support this project support this family, if you will, uh, in the pursuit of their dream. And uh, I uh, echo what the uh, captain said on behalf of the Navy in relationship with uh, the city, but the city is made up of citizens. And uh, the citizens make up uh, this community with its businesses, with its homes, with its faith communities, with the way that we uh, exercise our leisure activities, and I think uh, this is an excellent, excellent opportunity for a uh, family of this sort. And so I wanted to speak on behalf of them. I really wanted to uh, ask the uh, council if they would consider uh, <coughs> passing this and allowing this family to uh, pursue their dream and continue to embody everything that we uh, believe <coughs> families and people ought to be in our community. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Chris Collins.
Good evening, members of the council. Uh, my name is Christopher Collins. I reside at uh, 7526 Merritt Street in the city of Norfolk. Um, I've had the uh, unique uh, position to watch this process from, uh, from its beginning and its inception. And what I've seen in regards to this entire prog uh, process, in my opinion, is no less than a comedy of errors. I've watched as this young lady had a dream to come to this city and open up a, a, a business to bring income and, and tax revenue to, uh, to this city. I've watched as her family have, has come to support her and uh, offer resources. I've watched as the community has wrapped around her and come alongside of her. And then I've watched as her dream and her excitement start to wane as she started to engage the agencies of this city. As she stated on no less than three occasions, she went into the zoning commission, the zoning office, and each time they gave her exactly what they felt was needed in order to get her approval. And she did those things. Some of those things cost her money in order to get it done, but there was never ever an indication that she was not gonna be able to open up a business in this city. I sat in a meeting with her, members of the zoning uh, office, and a member of the of the United States Navy after that letter that she uh, talked about that came in December, out of the blue, simply stating, if you pull your application, we'll give you your money back. I sat in that meeting and I listened to the zoning, uh, uh, the, the uh, uh, employees of the zoning office state that they were unaware of this, that they had to find it, that in its obscurity, they were, they had to, as she stated, use a magnifying glass to even see that the, the, the building was in this area. I listened to that representative from the Navy state that, um, and, and, and in my opinion, attempt to justify why this agency had failed because of the fact that he was only in this position for a year and a half, and that in his position in Norfolk, he's the only person that does this job, whereas Virginia Beach has two of those individuals. I uh, sat in the planning commission uh, meeting right here in these chambers as the planning commission followed the recommendation of uh, what was sent in the, in, the, uh, in the zoning commission, all the while, again, crushing the dreams of this individual. And I am really hoping that what we're gonna see here tonight is a body of people that it, there's no denial that the policy is in place, but there is uh, it, it is very clear that nobody knows what the policy is. And so how can we hold the individual uh, uh, accountable as the planning commission has tried to do, as the, the members of the zoning office has attempted to do, when nobody knows what it is? So I'm hoping that the council is going to see past that and that they're going to push past the numbers, the policy, that they're going to see people in this and that they're going to vote favorably for this. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Howard Lamel Lay. I'm sorry, the Howard. Okay, it's French, it's Lamel. Lamel, that's what I thought. Yes, yeah, sir. Come on. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, honorable members of the council and those working alongside. Uh, I'd just like to ask for everyone in support of elegant occasions to please stand. Uh, not just a dream of one person, but also a business providing jobs within Norfolk and also bringing revenue to the city. And I do support it wholeheartedly. Thanks for coming down. Thank you. Thank you. Chen Stringer. Mm -hmm. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, Jen Stringer, 8834 Granby Street, Norfolk, Virginia, 23503. You have already heard the passion behind the people who started this business, um, and you've heard about the, the process that they've gone through to find out the difficulties of opening their business in their location. Um, I, I'm not going to go through all of that again because I, I've experienced the, the same passion and and the difficulties and I've worked with the planning department on a number of different things and the lack of availability of information was 
somewhat surprising that it didn't come out earlier. Um, but in going through the Plan Norfolk 2030, there's a couple of things that I noticed that might make an impact on the decision on this specific project. Um, I know the planning department saw this as um, a project that was um, an incompatible use in this area. Um, there is the, the list of land uses, <coughs> noise zones, and accident potential zones um, for uh, its LU3, table LU3 on page 219 uh, of Plan Norfolk 2030 that shows that commercial, retail, and other services are a conditionally compatible use. Now, I know there's the change of intensity or an increase of intensity in incompatible uses, but this is a conditionally compatible use. They're asking for 80 people in this building that as a retail facility would handle many more than that. Um, the nature of her business is uh, events, usually birthday parties, retirement parties, graduation parties. Um, those usually happen on, on weekends. They're not all the time. It's not saying that there's going to be 80 people in this, in this building from 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. Um, so think about the real use of this building before making your decision. Um, and also something that really, um, especially in, in being in the planning and design, uh, and construction industry, um, the, the action item LU 1.2.10 says to ensure, ensure that zoning regulations reflect noise zones and accident potential zones so that residents are aware of the impact of airport regulations and land use. Obviously from the statements previously said by the other supporters, the awareness was not there there was a commercial real estate broker that helped uh, the owner of this property um, lease to the tenants, and she was unaware of the impact of the accident potential zones. Not unaware that there were accident potential zones, but unaware of the impact. I appreciate your time, and please consider voting for this. Thank you. Michael Shipp. Mayor, Vice Mayor, Councilman, women, and City Manager, thank you for your time. Um, your address, please. My name is um, Michael Shipp. I live at 407 Sinclair Street in Norfolk, Virginia. Thank you. Um, I'd appreciate it if you guys could um, work with this family and kind of come to a compromise and help them out um, and support local small business. They've gone through a process here and really been trying to follow everything and do a good job. They have a good business that can really help create jobs and be a good impact and a positive for Ocean View, you know, doing wedding receptions and birthday parties. So it's a happy time. You know, it's a fun thing to do. And they're using it a few days a week, so it's not something that's going to be done all of the time. And, you know, it, the increase in occupancy won't be something that should really be a negative. Um, so it would be really good if Norfolk could um, vote for this and show support for local small business. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, that concludes the list of folks who, who asked to speak, I think. Somebody uh, may still decide to speak, and I'll give you that opportunity. We've already had everybody stand who's in support of this, but as I call your name out, if you have something you want to add and want to come to the podium, just, just wave at me, but there are a number of you. There's Ken Hines, Delissa Mackley, Christine Whitfield, Keith Collins, Priscilla Collins, Pris uh, yeah, Pris Priscilla Lee Collins, Dolores Collins, Joseph uh, Ramonette, Monique Hunter, PJ Collins, Anita Hicks, um, Serena, I'm not sure, Wiggins, excuse me, uh, Tina Brown, Carol Collins, Jerome Brown, Jeanette Harrison, Annie Collins, Emmeline Cooper, Burnett Southall, Amy Clements, Fanny Harrison, Isaac Butts, Priscilla Rogers, Quentin Rogers, 
Christina Collins, and Dunasia Boone. Okay, I think we got to everybody. If there's anybody whose name I missed who would like to speak, I see a full house here. Okay, thank you. I think that concludes the list. Uh, I, I think we're we're ready to vote. But does any member of the council have anything they want to say first? They can speak as as we as their name is called. Right? I just have a question of staff. Okay. Yeah. Hey, Marcus, uh, just so I know, I saw that two civic leagues were informed. Uh, I understand one uh, agreed. Did the other? Was there any objection from any civic league? Okay. George. Nothing is reflected in the package. That's right. Okay. It was the bit they got notice on 1216 and there was no objection that we know of. We, we received no, no response. And the, mo the most recent objection was the next door club, but we just received that, I think, today. Like, no, that was, the, was that older? That, that was in the, letter? that was actually at the planning commission. Okay, the letter was. Okay. <laughs> I got the hard copy in my package today. Okay. All right. That's all I have. Okay. Thank you. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Graves. Um, first of all, I just want to say that um, I came here um, after reviewing the packet and listening to the Navy um, fully prepared to mm -hmm. vote against this um, just based on um, what I had in front of me and um, the information from the Navy, but when Miss, where, what was the owner? Hines. Miss Hines, when you said that you came here and um, nobody told you, and then you had several meetings and nobody told you, and when this gentleman here said that he sat in on meetings and it wasn't until somewhere down the line, um, to me that's just not right. It seems as though if we're the city and we're supposed to be the authority, that we're supposed to know the rules. And that's why we have a planning department. Just like the city is made up of people, the planning department is made up of people. And if we're the experts, then we are supposed to know the rules. And when we ask people to go through a process that we lay out for them, you know, we should know the rules. And so with all due respect to the military, I appreciate their position, I really do. And as a realtor, I understand um, um, about the zones, um, but um, it seems to me that we ask folks to do stuff and then when they do it, um, if we drop the ball, the citizens shouldn't be the ones who pay the price. And this is a small business. Um, in the city, we always encourage, we hear it a lot on national news, we hear it everywhere, small business is the heart of America, it's the heartbeat of America, and small businesses are the heartbeat of uh, the city as well. And so, um, while I understand the Navy's position, they said they wouldn't be terribly upset with us if um, this passed, so we're going to hold them to that, and given the fact that we didn't do what we were supposed to do. I just don't think it's right that you have to pay the price for that. So I wish you well and I wish you success and I vote aye. Ms. Johnson. Um, Ms. Crystal Hines, um, coming here this evening and, and listening and the information that I was giving, um, my vote was going to be a no for you. Mm -hmm with the understanding um, in mind that I was deeply concerned about your safety and the safety of your future customers. That was my primary concern for you um, based on the information from the, the military. My concern now is that although we trust the Planning Commission to do a good job for the city, and they do. I do feel as though somewhere along the lines, I did not receive all the facts. And so with that said, it is my concern that we may have dropped the ball concerning your situation. And of course, although my vote was going to be no for you, um, I had a plan B for you so that you would continue as a 
entrepreneur for the city of Norfolk, and I had discussed it with the city manager, that he was going to put forth his team to find another location for you to become an entrepreneur in the city of, of Norfolk. But my vote will be yes for you, since somewhere along the lines, the ball was dropped. And with that said, we will have to do a better job at looking at this situation that is presented before us this evening. And a special thank you to the military because we are very thankful for all that you do, Captain, and that the city will continue to work with the military so that we can address this AP zone. Thank you. You were going to try to move them to Broad Creek, weren't you? <laughs> sure, you're right. You can't have them. You can't have them. They're mine. Mr. Protegiri. Paul, briefly. Sure. Uh, Captain, I still hope I get a Christmas uh, invitation to your house. Uh, we do appreciate that greatly. Um, this is what it's all. And, and when you, I looked, when I reviewed it again, I went back and um, the military, and I greatly appreciate them being in Norfolk and what you do. Uh, and as we understand this to be the type of establishment that's not full all the time, uh, and we're using a formula, and the formula tells us no. As I read the packet of material and reread it, uh, but I also have to weigh and balance out the fact that this is. Um, it's a small minority-owned business, which is what we want to promote in this city. And a woman-owned business, I know there's, I see you there, you raised your hand, Mr. Hines, but uh, we know Krista, who's <laughs> Krista's got it going on, man. <laughs> You're here. Uh, uh, that being said, as we look at it, and, um, and I tried to balance it out and considering all the circumstances, uh, when I have to balance something, a formula versus what I see in person uh, and taking nothing away from the captain uh, and what we we must do in the future with uh, these issues uh, this has got to be a yes uh, to make this happen I would encourage you to please work with your neighbor next door uh, on the parking issues I know you've done Doman's job in getting parking and I appreciate what the doctor has done but I think you do need to work with the uh, neighbor next door and that will take us a long way in uh, in your success, take you a long way in your success, and the city a long way in success. So um, my vote is aye, I'm for this. Mr. Riddick? You know, um, I've been knowing this family, <clears throat> first time I've ever seen Ms. Hines, I believe, but her family I've been knowing for 60 years, if you can believe that or not. And this, this is one of the finest, honest, hardworking families that we've ever had in the city of Norfolk. I knew the uh, Mr. Percy Lee Collins Sr., Miss Alfreda Collins. We were, I've been knowing them since I was going to uh, the old Mount Carmel Baptist Church on Princess Anne Road. And it's just a strong, strong, hardworking family. And um, with that, I can only vote yes. Mr. Smeagol? So uh, I made some comments earlier in the um, our informal session about this. Taking all the personalities out, the wonderful family, Ms. Hines, and the church support that's here, taking the military out uh, that is a big player in our city, I'm looking at the city's role in all this, and my comments earlier were about inconsistencies that we have in this area as a city. I, I announced in a few weeks we have the big St. Patrick's Day parade that's going to bring thousands of people down on Granby Street right in all of the APZ zones. Uh, we had meetings last night in two buildings that had over 100 people in them uh, in the area. We have the beach festivals uh, that happen right in Ocean View Beach Park, which is right in the same area that bring hundreds of people. And so as a city, we have some inconsistencies and in, I think working with the military and educating from this point forward, making sure that as we get applicants to come before us, that we are um, addressing this issue in an appropriate way. In addition, um, I, you know, I, I, I spoke about parking just a little bit, and I know the Hines family will work with me that if any complaints come in about parking, we'll find a solution to it as we go forward. I honestly hope that you're not there that long because I think you're going to get so successful that you're going to need a bigger location, so it's probably going to be temporary anyway. Um, so I wish you much success with that. I vote aye. 
Dr. Wibley? Um, I don't see that there's any reason for me to delay. I think everybody else has spoken very well on this issue, so I'm just going to vote aye. Mr. Wynn? Yeah, I want to uh, comment on you know, I, I, whether the Planning Commission or not handled it properly or, or, or the Planning Department. Uh, we're going to be setting a precedent here. It's obviously the vote is done, and, and I hope you're going to be good uh, neighbors. Uh, we do have people that are concerned about parking issues and what have you, but uh, I don't know how we ever say with, when the Navy is weighed in and they're a great partner in our city, the Planning Commission and the uh, Planning Department, how we can turn our back on that. Uh, I wish you luck. You're in, but I, I vote no. Mr. Frame? Yeah, and let me say, uh, I'm sure every all the nice things that have been said by everybody here tonight is true, and we, we're sure that you're going to be great business folks, and, and we'll have a nice uh, business uh, down there in Ocean View. I, um, the, the city, some time ago, entered into a process with the United States Navy to talk about encroachment on their naval facilities, especially their landing strips. We did it with the city of Virginia Beach and with Chesapeake. There are three air stations here, basically. There's Oceana, there's Fentress Field. It's not a station, but it's, it's a place that the Navy uses, and, it's, um, and there is uh, uh, Fentress at uh, the Naval Station. Um, Fentress happens to be one of the busiest airports in the country, believe it or not. And so we entered into an agreement with them that we would not adopt uses or make changes in our plan that would intensify development you know, in and around certain zones which, you know, people could crash and planes could fall in. And the likelihood of that happening is very, very, very low. But still, in a matter, I mean, we entered into those agreements not knowing that there was a low probability. The Navy, the city, we all signed these agreements. It was well understood, and now the Navy has asked us to live up to our word and to the commitment we made when we signed this agreement. This is not about you know, development and, I mean, an ocean view or that. This is about public safety. The, and, you know, God forbid um, that, you know, let's hope nothing happens down there. Uh, you don't zone out, for instance, parades. And, there. I mean, there's plenty of development down there. This is about encroachment creep, one development at a time. And eventually the Navy will discern a pattern. And once they discern a, a pattern of encroachment, they'll decide to move assets uh, away from the station. That are that are, you know, that I can't tell you that the Navy and the and Norfolk, our our heritage goes deep, and everybody can say all the nice things about the Navy up here that they want, and then vote in a contrary way. But I, but I'm going to have to say I'm going to have to vote no. All right, thank you all for coming down, though. Appreciate you being here. All right, R2, please. R2 is an ordinance granting a special exception to permit the operation of a commercial drive through for Chartway Federal Credit Union on property located at 132 Kempsville Road. Uh, and Planning Commission on a 7-0 vote recommends denial of this item. And this was continued from February 9, Mr. President. No, this one <clears throat> um, John Richardson. Mayor, members of council, my name is John Richardson. I'm an attorney with Kaufman and Knowles. I represent the applicant in this matter. Um, we would appreciate council's consideration of our position and enable us to build our flagship branch on this corner in the city of Norfolk. Uh, we have engineered it so that the front entrance will be level with the sidewalk so the pedestrians can walk from the sidewalk into the front of the, into the bank itself. The traffic that circulates around the building will be gentled is the word used, or calmed is the word used by the uh, engineering professionals. And we would uh, appreciate council's positive vote. This is recommended by staff. Thank you. Yes. And we've got John Bloom and Scott Juning and Eugene Thompson here to speak as well. Okay, we're ready to vote. Can we be reminded why we're vote why the planning voted against this? It's a drive it's a drive through. No, but it was also because of pedestrian access. Okay. With the <laughs> drive-through, um, cut that off. Okay, so I'm just wanted to be. Did we change the rule that when there's a vote that's negative on planning commission, that we no longer get updates on that? Did I miss that meeting too? The Wibley rule. The Wibley rule, especially I, on a, a, seven, a zero seven. We vote. used to. 
Mm -hmm. We used to get those. Well, if they were united in the vote, so you didn't, if they were split, <laughs> the rule is if they're split. That we've, but even before that, we've always, I think, received presentations when there's something controversial or deemed controversial that comes up. Okay, where well, we are, what do you want to do? I, I, I just wanted to know why, we're, uh, I mean, I, I read it. The, the answer is we didn't get a, a presentation because the, the Planning Commission voted uh, unanimously to deny. But why wasn't, did, what was the issue we passed by it on? Didn't we, I guess we to find that out. Last time on something. They asked to have, they asked we requested to have continued. it continued. Frankly, our last vote, we didn't have a presentation on that either. We're the ones that requested it. Am I correct? Right. No, I think the. Yeah. Planning, no, I think, yeah. no, the last one, we, 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 we decided yeah. that we were confused about it, and so we asked for an update. Yeah. But yeah. And there was no update on the last one, which was a unanimous neighbor. Yeah. You know, the. Uh, so we need to get the rules in the the Staff is in favor of this. Staff is in favor. Yeah. They're going to move into Norfolk. Is that the idea? Yes, sir. Because the other side is Virginia Beach, right? Yes, sir. The um, Planning Commission asked that you all work with planning to see if you could devise a plan that would be more compatible, and you have agreed not to do that. Is that correct? Um, Dr. Wibley, the problem is that, that the Planning Commission's sentiment was for us to move the building up to abut the sidewalk. Right. If we do that, we no longer have traffic circulation around the building. If we do that, traffic will stack up, excuse me, will stack up onto Newtown Road. This is the busiest branch. This is Chartway's flagship branch. It gets 350 visits a day, so 700 trips in and out. And we, we simply won't build the building. It doesn't make economic sense because so many of our members use the drive-through to gain access to the bank's uh, facilities. You, so, do you presently own the land? Yes, ma'am. And you will do what then when you don't build it? We would sell it to the, we've outbid a national convenience store chain for the site and we would sell it to them. You know, one thing I think about, if I, <laughs> if I can have a second, if you think about the Chartway at the corner of Tidewater Drive and Little Creek Road, mm -hmm. it has the same configuration uh, as that uh, existing Chartway in terms of the d distance that the building is from the street and, and also the fact that they still have uh, traffic circulation from, um, you know, drive through tellers. All right, thank you, John. Okay, John. sure. Yeah. Where's the the headquarters used to be across the street in Virginia Beach? Right? Yes, sir, that's correct. You're now moving it into the city of Norfolk. Mo the, our flagship branch, Ms. Perdigiro. Flagship branch. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If you so will. We would have the flagship branch in the city, and if and if we don't get that, we're going to get a convenience store. That's what you're telling me. Um, I, I presume that's what they would be. Yes, sir. That, the national chain doesn't build anything but that, sir. I understand. A convenience store? I appreciate you. Yes, ma'am. We outbid the convenience store chain for the site. It was a gas station, Ms. Johnson. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. That's right on the corner, right across from the um, light rail. Lot for the light rail. Yes, ma'am. Oh, okay. BP, okay. It was a BP okay. gas station. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's a gas station there, across the street. And another one. Mm -hmm. And we we're beside a church, and the church is happy for us to come because mm -hmm. they'll get additional parking. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this Oop. is a okay. this is a transit area. Zone. It, the idea is that it should be transit and so pedestrian oriented, especially because it's in conjunction with the um, transit uh, center there for light rail. That's why um, Planning Commission voted against it. Right. We, with hopes that the that Chartway would work with them on getting a better design. You know, I, just a quick comment. If we end up voting for this, which it sounds like we will vote for it, I think Speak we... yourself. Well, I think it's going to pass, Terry. Um, <laughs> Say that. <laughs> but I, I think probably we need to have uh, a good sit-down meeting with the planning commission because we have been voting against a lot of their recommendations, and I think there may be some philosophical differences on some items, um, and maybe we just need to have a sit-down conversation and see where it's going. I, and I know we voted on the plan 2030, but one of the questions I asked early on in that was how much flexibility we have in that plan, and we knew along the way all the years the other plan was there, we, we voted against things that were in there. So I think, though, we, we should probably really have a conversation with the Planning uh, Commission, because I, I don't want to say it's embarrassing, but we, we have been voting opposite of the Planning Commission on a lot of votes recently. It could also just be personalities, you know. John, did they know, may I have Paul? Did they, did planning know that the ultimate issue is going to be a convenience store versus 
your flagship? No, sir. And, and when one of the commissioners said that he didn't feel this was an appropriate site for a bank branch, I didn't want to be flip and say, well, sir, it's going to be a convenience store. It's not a bank branch. So I didn't, I, did, I was not asked the question, so I didn't volunteer that. <laughs> Thank they did not know that. Would a convenience store okay, come here. to our Sir? Well, they asked a question here, Mr. I got you. I <laughs> Would a convenience store go to planning and come to us? Alcohol. So it's not automatic that we would approve of a We had a, a special exception for alcohol. That's, That's all right. we need is a special exception. And what about I, would the convenience store want a, I guess they wouldn't have a drive through then? No. They'd probably have gasoline. Yeah. Uh, th thank you, John. Yes, sir. George, can you, the planning staff <laughs> thank you, store. Uh, recommended. Um, approval. Can you give us your thoughts? And that's um, another issue as well. Mr. Mayor, members of no. council, the, um, this piece of property is located in what is known as a transit-oriented development designated in the um, general plan, your plan Norfolk 2030. Because of that, both planning staff and the planning commission uh, went to extra lengths to try to make sure that this uh, facility is um, as receptive and friendly to pedestrians as it possibly can be. Now, I think there is needs to be some recognition that there are some fairly wide roads um, that carry fairly high amounts of traffic um, at relatively high speeds that are sep that separate this particular parcel from the light rail station. But the issue is proximity to light rail and whether or not the, this area eventually can become a transit-oriented development that is walkable, bikeable, um, and, and friendly to um, you know, pedestrians and, and transit users. Um, you asked the question, Mr. Smeagle, about the difference between the Planning Commission and City Council. Um, the Planning Commission takes very seriously its charge to be the guardian of Plan Norfolk 2030. And so what's in Plan Norfolk 2030, they take as um, a very, very strong um, suggestion of how their recommendations need to go. And because Plan Norfolk designates this as a transit-oriented development, they felt strongly that um, the having any sort of a drive-through um, any sort of an automobile-centric use, which would go to the, to the question of a convenience store, um, is inappropriate. Staff, on the other hand, took the position that they had made a number of um, significant improvements um, by adding the speed table and um, allowing a way to uh, have the circulation on the site they need, um, and that as a, at least a, a 15 to 20 or 30 year use, um, it certainly makes a lot of sense. And so that was the difference between staff recommendation and the Planning Commission. All right, thank you, George. Appreciate it. On the diagram, George, the double white that goes around the perimeter of that, is that a sidewalk? Double white. I believe that's a drive aisle, ma'am. A what? A drive aisle. It's, a, it's where people will be driving. No, because oh, around this the is, it's under the trees. Or oh, sure. There's an existing sidewalk in that area. So it continues the entire perimeter? Yes. Thank you. Call the roll, please. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Graves? Aye. <coughs> Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protozero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? No. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Thank you. R3, please. An ordinance granting an exemption from real estate taxes for real property to St. Thomas AME Zion Church retroactive to July 1, 2013. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protozero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R4. An ordinance to amend and reordain subsection F of sections 24-160, 25-219, 42-34, and subsection A of section 42-35 of the Code of the City of Norfolk, so as to replace the words Sunday school, church, and churches with the words religious education, religious institution, and religious institutions, and so as to correct the typographical error in section 42-34 by replacing the word show with the word snow. All right, are any of the students here, by the way? Virginia Wesleyan? 
No? Okay, they won. Yes. Okay. All right, go ahead. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? These are millennials you're always talking about. Yeah. They got other things to do. They're here Bernie's place. Mr. Smeagol? That's why that's why Paul's retiring. That's right. I millennials can understand them. Aye. Okay. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R5. An ordinance to amend and reordain sections 25-646 and 654 of the Norfolk City Code so as to add seven new speed limits and one new stop intersection. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R6. An ordinance to amend and reordain sections 25-652 and 654 of the Norfolk City Code so as to add one new one-way street and five new stop intersections. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance. Yeah, what Mr. De Palma was going to, uh, Chris... You're here to answer questions if, if and okay. there's the wrong map was attached I think to it. You got it once. Yes. I th think you're winning. So. This is Ward's Corner right here. That's right. Okay. Um, yeah, the only thing that I had noticed on the um, document that it was attached to this item was that the um, one of the locations, the signs, um, it, specifically at Colonial Avenue and Maycox Avenue, those stop signs already exist and we're looking to have them go in the north south direction. So that's all. Got it. Okay. Thanks for coming down. Thank you very much. Okay. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R7. An ordinance accepting a 2015 State Homeland Security Program grant award of $71,370 from the Virginia Department of Emergency Management for the City of Norfolk Office of Emergency Management for Community Sheltering Enhancement Equipment. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R8. A resolution to designate the area generally to the east of St. Paul's Boulevard, to the south of East Butte Street, to the west of Fenchurch Street, and to the north of Mariner Street in the city of Norfolk is the Greater St. Paul's Revitalization Area. Okay, there are five folks who have signed up to speak on this matter. Again, I want to call your name if you come <coughs> to the podium. Um, identify yourself for the record by giving us your full name and your present home address. And then if you could limit your remarks to 30 seconds, we'd appreciate it. <laughs> We're just getting three minutes. I would... <laughs> Reverend John Burton. Reverend Burton. Good evening. Good evening, Mayor. Uh, 30 seconds. Three minutes. <laughs> uh, Mayor Frame and to Vice Mayor uh, Angela Williams Graves and to the members of the Norfolk City Council. My name is John Burton. I live at 690 uh, Red Mill Road in the city of Norfolk. I also serve as the senior pastor of historic St. John's AME Church that's located at 545 East Butte Street. I stand tonight to ask you to approve this resolution because I, dem I believe it demonstrates that this area is a revitalization area and the city of Norfolk has, uh, should make it a priority. And by voting to designate it, it would help to encourage uh, other development like the St. Paul's uh, Apartments, which is adjacent to our church and where the city has agreed to sell the land for this development. Uh, this area designated is keeping with the goals of the city of Norfolk to encourage other mixed housing uh, and commercial development. Uh, so I ask you tonight if you would please vote in favor of it, and I think I did it in one minute. Good man, thank you. <laughs> Rodney Jordan. Good evening, Honorable Mayor, Vice Mayor, Members of Council, City Manager Jones, Rodney Jordan, 2506 uh, Myrtle Avenue. When the uh, original concept of the uh, Low Income Housing Tax Credit Project in the St. Paul's Quadrant came up, I contacted uh, city staff because I was surprised because I knew it did not comply with the St. Paul's Quadrant plan. And many of the planning staff, they were uh, fearful in even talking about uh, 
the project. They said that there was some um, push coming from up above, and they didn't feel that they could offer their um, wisdom and advice on the on the project. And I just raised that to you. I know that you all have recently been talking about, you know, the culture and the way some things should be done. And I would just raise that for you to consider as you move forward. Uh, also, uh, brought you a map. Uh, originally, uh, about a month ago, the administration recommended that you expand these boundaries and it went all the way over in Broad Creek. On this map, uh, every orange dot represents uh, one person who happens to be Caucasian. Every green dot represents a person who happens to be African American. Uh, the purple are uh, public housing units. The blue are low income housing tax credit units. The orange are Project 8, Section 8 units. So originally they came and they said, let's draw a line around here in order to encourage more low income housing tax credit development in the midst of all this subsidized housing. Uh, then after they got some feedback from a council member, they moved it back to Tidewater Drive. You all passed it by. And now here we are today. When I did a Google search on these revitalization areas in Virginia, there were um, similar designations, I believe Alexandria, Arlington, uh, Albemarle County, and some others. And they just came out and said that they were doing it in support of a particular project as they were trying to make sure that there was affordable housing in areas that were um, very, very high income. If you all designate this zone in this area, what you're basically doing is encouraging more subsidized housing in this area that is already uh, racially isolated, already concentrated in poverty. This is a map that I got from the Affirmative Fair Housing tool that's available through HUD these days. And if you look on the west side here, it would seem to me if you are going to designate a zone that you would draw the zone so that it would go over onto the west side so that you can also encourage that there be low income uh, housing and, and affordable housing where it really needs to be available on the west side of St. Paul. So I would ask that you all would uh, reject this. Um, it does not in keep with the goals and objectives of the plan. It is a, a effort really just to give 10 bonus points to the um, uh, Nussbaum project, which is fine, but if that's what we're gonna do, let's just say that and have a conversation about it. Uh, but I just want to bring that again to your attention as you consider your vote. Thank you. Cheryl Montgomery. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of council. Uh, I'm here tonight to speak in favor of the resolution that designate uh, Greater St. Paul's uh, revitalization area, R8, on the agenda. Uh, the approval of this resolution will continue to provide the necessary impetus for future funding and also opportunities to meet the redevelopment needs within St. Paul's. Approval of the resolution will also be consistent with many of the city's visions to help create healthy, vibrant, mixed income communities in Norfolk. This resolution is important and it's a necessary step in re revitalization of the greater St. Paul's. The paradigm for housing in the United States is changing and Norfolk must be a part of that change. Thank you. Thank you, James Watson. Good evening. Good evening, Mayor Frame, Vice Mayor Graves, uh, Honorable Members of Council, City Manager Jones. My name is James Watson. Uh, my address is 703 East Virginia Beach Boulevard. I'd like to speak in opposition of this resolution. I think each of you received uh, correspondence from me earlier today that detailed a variety of reasons associated with rejection of it. One of the first one I want to talk about is the, the uh, notification system. I think that it was woefully inadequate to use an agenda notification system to for a designation of a revitalization zone, especially to those stakeholders who would be interested in knowing the reasons why and what for. Um, as Mr. Jordan said, I hate to piggyback on it, but this whole thing started as a massive revitalization area that went from 
a western border of St. Paul's Boulevard all the way over to Broad Creek. And then it's magically shrank, and then it magically shrank again. And now we're at a point where we are looking at it is what it is. And why don't we say what it is so that we'll all be able to talk about that. But as stakeholders go, we would like to know what the reasons are, why it would be, and we'd like to be notified for that in a normal and informative fashion. As a representative of a stakeholder group, I expect to be notified in a manner that we can have an opportunity for forthright communication that allows me to have detailed information and understanding about the purpose, the need, and what it seeks to resolve, correct or assist. That's just normal things that you as a citizen would want. I'm not asking for anything unusual, but at this point we haven't been done that. That hasn't been done for us, and I know along with members of Queen Street Baptist Church, if y'all could stand for me, I know that they have the very same concerns about it, that they haven't been told anything about this, and they'd like to know about it. And a late notification is just not an appropriate thing. I'd hope that you would at least allow us to have information on it so that we'd be able to intelligently discuss why this is necessary. Thank you so much. Thank you. And uh, Mr. Johnson's here to answer questions if anyone has any. All right, you can call the roll then. Adopt the resolution, Ms. Graves. Um, I want to say that I um, had great heartburn over this when um, I first saw the map and um, got a lot of um, calls about it. Um, and then, um, you know, going back, telling the staff to, this is not acceptable. Um, we need to do better than this. If we, if we need a revitalization area to make the project work, then it needs to be a revitalization area that doesn't just clump everybody together. Um, and we instructed staff to, um, do some outreach with the community. Um, it is my understanding that staff has reached out to several members of the community um, and um, trying to get this area to a place that would not encroach on um, already concentrated areas of poverty um, that could be the simplest area possible to um, assist the developer in um, moving forward with their project. And so um, while it's not the most ideal um, situation, we are where we are and um, moving forward on it is necessary. So what I would say is um, in the future, I need Marcus, the administration, to urge to your deputies that we need to make sure that we are reaching out to all of the stakeholders, all of the residents, all of the people who are going to be impacted by the decisions that we make, whether people come to a meeting or not, we need to at least make the information available so that we can answer their questions and so that we can um, resolve or at least attempt to resolve any issues that they may have. Okay. But I do vote aye. Ms. Johnson? It became aware to me <laughs> that the city had not reached out to all of the stakeholders. Um, although the boundaries that are um, outlined now <coughs> as of the third try um, and the majority of the property belongs to the city, <clears throat> the city belongs to the citizens. And with that said, um, the business owners were um, not included as well as the greater area um, of the people who reside there. 
so that they too could have an update and give input to um, the city, the city council, um, Marcus, you and your um, group. And although the boundaries, again, belong to the city, I would hope that um, although we use the word revitalization, that the overall vision for the greater St. Paul's quadrant is that we provide economic development, mixed income, and market rate um, property so that everyone in the city of Norfolk will have the opportunity to live, play, and work in the um, quadrant. And this is a concern to me because I stressed over and over and that the question was, was there outreach to the community? And to see that the only form of outreach was what was presented on that piece of paper. So with that said, I think that we can do um, a better job. It also concerns me that we have to address this particular issue again in front of city council. I encourage the citizens of Norfolk to get involved, not just when something comes before the council the night of, but I encourage you to reach out to your city council person so that we can know your thoughts, your ideas, and your suggestions. We're here for you every day and we work very hard for you. I am also encouraging those persons who are interested in developing in the for, uh, Ward 4, I'm sorry, the Greater St. Paul's Quadrant, that you get involved, that you too become an entrepreneur for the city of Norfolk. Aye. Mr. Protegera? Uh, we just need to do better in the way we conduct our business. Yes. Bottom line. Aye. <clears throat> Mr. Riddick? Uh, <clears throat> You know, um, <coughs> first of all, I, uh, I'm going to vote uh, yes on this, uh, this resolution. <clears throat> but we have to really look seriously at what we're doing in Norfolk. Uh, Norfolk, like uh, other cities uh, in the country, uh, is getting ready to go through gentrification. Uh, it's not necessarily racial gentrification, but it's economic as well. <clears throat> uh, Norfolk has always had... Uh, very, very segregated housing patterns uh, all the way back to the beginning. And, uh, but taking race out of it and adding class to it as well, St. Paul Boulevard is the dividing line. And Norfolk, and whether it's a shadow <laughs> government or whoever it is, whether the hand is, uh, they seem to want to put a particular economic class of individuals uh, to the east of uh, St. Paul Boulevard and then the upper scale uh, individuals economically to the West. Uh, we have been talking, I'm talking about we, I'm talking about the city and the housing authority have been talking about this for 17 years. And, and I would encourage everybody here uh, on both sides of the aisle to realize that this is not a public housing issue because that's the next uh, uh, level it's gonna be, but it's a moral issue. And we are all citizens uh, and elected officials, and we are morally responsible to make sure that the individuals who live in public housing um, uh, get the same safe sanitary housing that they happen to enjoy now. Uh, Norfolk wants to, I guess, you know, uh, create a high profile regionally, but if we, uh, uh, the citizens of Norfolk, whether you're black, whether you're white, whether you're rich, whether you're poor, if we allow the city to gentrify this particular portion of Norfolk without having concern about the senior citizens that live there, uh, the children who live there, and families who just want a nice place to live, <coughs> you'd be surprised at the anxiety that a lot of the seniors who live in uh, Tidewater Park have had for 17 years, not knowing when the bulldozers <coughs> are going to come. And so now, this is the very beginning. This is a huge area. And so, uh, and uh, the persons who are uh, in opposition uh, have a legitimate reason to be uh, in opposition. 
and the persons who are supporting it have a legitimate reason. But until we have a serious discussion about housing and who lives where and not being afraid of who lives beside you, then uh, we're never going to go anywhere. Uh, and this is nothing but a pure case of gentrification. The other boundaries that they had earlier, uh, people, you, if you think you saw people here for the Ocean View issue, for the elegant occasion, if they had gone initially with the boundaries that they had three weeks ago, uh, people would be down on the first floor trying to get here. This is a very serious issue, and until the Redevelopment Housing Authority and the City of Norfolk, as far as the council is concerned, and, it, and, and we need to see a commitment from the City of Norfolk. And what I, what I mean by that, we all know that you're trying to gentrify Tidewater Park. So whether it's through general obligation bonds or whatever it is, we need to see a commitment. We need to see you bring some other bricks and mortar out of the ground. And before we move the first brick in Tidewater Park, that we have a place for our seniors to live, that we have a place for young families with children to live. <clears throat> and we have the ability to do that uh, every day. I mean, we, every, we just spent, I don't know, $18 million, which I supported, I voted for, down uh, as far as uh, uh, military circle is concerned. So we have to have that same commitment when it comes to the human infrastructure as opposed to just bricks and mortar. And as I say, I support this project, and I hope going forward uh, we can all have a conversation, and, and I'm talking about everybody in Norfolk have a conversation about this. Uh, just like I'm concerned about the retirees, and I am, and I fight for you every year to try to get you uh, an increase. I want you to come back uptown and be concerned about the people who live in the park. If you want our continued support for you, then it can't be a closed issue. You have to be concerned about people all over. I'm concerned about you. I'm concerned about the raises that you get. I make sure that a certain level of uh, retirees get a one-time payment each year of $300 and some five. So all I'm saying to you, if I'm continuing to support you when we need you uptown, you can't hide in a, in, in a vacuum. Come back uptown and let's get this thing done right. And I vote aye. Mr. Smeagol? Um, Mr. Riddick made reference to um, people that are opposed to it and people that are for it and their reasons for it. You know, when I'm looking at this, the, the ship has sailed on the other project, and it's time to move forward with that. So what I'm more interested in is how does this VHDA area benefit the next developer who wants to come through and do the right work that's there? And what are we doing right now to engage uh, the Dr. Watsons of the world that are interested in that area um, on on the next project? So, so we should be moving forward right now. And so, you know, it, to me, this VHDA designation is going to benefit uh, Councilwoman William uh, um, Johnson and I w went to some wonderful VHDA properties in uh, Roanoke uh, and toured that as part of VML. Um, and the resources that are available um, through VHDA, I think, will only benefit the whole area. So w right now, we should be engaging the next set of developers on what should be happening there um, and doing it the, the way that um, has been mentioned this evening. Aye. Dr. Wibley? Well, one of the beauties of being last is that everybody's already said it. But a um, couple of things. No, I know. A <laughs> couple of things, quickly. Obviously, the process was flawed. We needed to get the word out. I hope we will learn from this lesson. But secondly, I just had a discussion with Marcus, and I think it encapsulates everything that we've heard tonight, is that this city desperately needs a broad, overreaching housing plan. We've had the Poverty Commission, which has begged for just exactly um, this kind of uh, overreaching um, statement that would help us uh, going forward. I actually said to Marcus, this would be may maybe my last hurrah, would be before I leave, I would be <coughs> that I would see Norfolk come up with a housing plan. So I think this just teaches us exactly wh what the need is for that. Aye. Mr. Wynn? I recuse myself. Mr. Frame? Aye. All right, thank you all um, very much for coming down. Um, R9.
an ordinance directing the city treasurer to issue a refund to Miller Oil Company, Inc. in the amount of $624,684 plus interest based upon the overpayment of its business, professional, and occupational license tax for the years 2012 through 2015. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Or 10. An ordinance amending and reordaining the fiscal year 2016 compensation plan to add one new section authorizing a bonus for certain employees. Ms. James? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the City Council, Vice Mayor, Mrs. Graves. Mr. Jones, I uh, have a concern that suddenly appeared out of nowhere, but I'm not going to address that right now. Um, I'm assuming that item 10 is not an item addressing the needs of our retired employees, but that it involves specifically the police department. Mr. James, you can address your comments to the council. Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay. I know you know the answer. Okay. <laughs> um, is that a fair assessment of item 10? About the police department? And we don't typically, as you know, Ellis, we don't typically answer questions from, from here. Well, but, Mr. Mayor, but with no, all it, due respect, it, it's, it's with all due board, respect yeah. to you, this this number item number 10 gives uh, authorizing a bonus for certain employees boom right so it's across right it's with in keeping with the compensation plan okay well I hope it's the police department but I want to see in the same breath that we address the issue that these folks are here for. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Jane Bethel. <laughs> oh, it's been a long night. Good evening, Mayor Frame, Vice Mayor Graves, City Council members. Good evening. Mr. Jones. Uh, my name is Jane Bethel. I live at 1142 Little Bay Avenue, and uh, I'm speaking tonight on this because I heard a little rumor that certain people is the, just the police department, uh, that they're getting raises and bonuses. And um, I just want to speak out on that and say that, as I always have for many, many years, it's not really fair to single out one group. We're all going out there buying gas. Well, Gas has come down, so I can't use that one anymore. But They caught me on that one, too, Jane. Buying, we're buying cereal. I mean, you know, and things like that. Everything has gone up. And our retirees haven't had raises in years. Um, if you're going to give one group in the city a bonus or a raise, it should be given to everybody, the general employees and the teachers. I'm going to speak up for the teachers like I always have in the past also. Everybody should get the same thing. If you can't give, you know, everybody the same thing, then give everybody a smaller something, but everybody should get the same. And um, I, you know, somebody get, put a little bug in my ear and said, well, what about these bonuses? Isn't that some kind of a gift, and is it even legal to give a gift if it's not in the compensation plan? Thank you so much. All right, well, thank you. I, it, this is not about the police department. I just would put that comments to rest. It is about trying to fix an issue that arose in this year's compensation plan. And there are maybe it's addressing 50, 60, how many? It, it addresses everyone, Mayor, so it's it's a little bit uh, north as we finished, a little bit north of 100, but it's okay. every employee. Right. Okay. Thank and you. Can I just say something real quick? The um, way that the ordinance is written on the public, um, probably if you read the description that we have. All right where it says this agenda item is an ordinance to amend and reordain the compensation ordinance to provide bonuses for employees who were not initially eligible 
for an increase due to the reaching the maximum of their respective pay range. And there's an analysis on there that also discusses it. Maybe the way the language was written could have probably been a little bit clearer to show that we're actually correcting an error that was on this and that we're not going back and now adding more money on top of compensation. Right. That was a good point. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt Ms. Graves. Marcus, I just want to say thank you. Um, it was very, it, it was and is um, very important to me that when we say that everybody gets a raise, mm -hmm. everybody gets a raise um, that works for us. We have, um, I've always supported the employees and that disparity that came in our compensation plan was totally unfair. So I appreciate your effort to move on it quickly and to get it um, rectified. Um, I still have a question about the word bonus, not that it's not legal, but just at how it's taxed to make sure that those receiving bonuses are not overly taxed more than they would be if it was a part of their general wage and if the bonuses um, will go towards their um, retirement like a general wage increase would and if it would go towards their social security as well. So I would like answers to those two questions also. But thank you for um, for correcting this for all the employees. I vote aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. That's all I have, Mr. President. Okay. Thank you very much. That concludes the formal portion of tonight's agenda.